Hello and welcome to the TVC Survey and Construction YouTube channel. In this video I will be going through TZF and FLS import and registration. That is the file format from Trimble Scanners and from Faro Scanners. Here I have a blank project with no set coordinate system and with US survey foot as the default unit. The scans I'll be importing are from Colorado so that explains the unit. For this workflow, I will be importing a JXL file. This contains um, four points from natural targets from a previous SX10 scan in the same area. This can be for points from total station observations or from GNSS or RTK points. Uh, this is anything that is easily identifiable in the point cloud in order to set real world coordinates to your scans. And that will in turn georeference your scans. So I'm just going to click and drag in the JXL. The JXL contains a coordinate system as well as four points. Here on the bottom we can see the coordinate system has been updated. We're now on Colorado Central 0502. You can get that by clicking down here or by going to the project settings from the quick access toolbar, clicking on coordinate system, and here we get a summary of the coordinate system. This is a United States state plane project. The datum is NAT83. If you want to change this, you click on change here and set your coordinate system of choice. If you're importing CSV um, points for georeferencing, then you want to set your coordinate system before importing those points. Excellent. And so for importing scans, navigate to the file or folder that those scans are stored in. Select your point or select your scans and drag and drop in. And there we have our scans imported. Notice that they have been imported at 0, 0 in the project. This means that the wrong scale factor is currently applied to them. And that each of the scans have been imported on top of each other. Uh, this can be apparent if I go to the point clouds ribbon, go to under the rendering section. If I select the lower half of this icon, I can choose to display by scan color. So now each of the scan stations is a different color. So we can see that they're all kind of overlapping. I can quickly get them to the right place in the project by going to the georeference scans command. It's in the point clouds ribbon, registration, georeference scans. Oh, before I get in here, let's look in the project explorer. I haven't saved my project yet, so it's still called unnamed. But under my points, I have the four points that were imported with the JXL and the four scans or the four scan stations that were brought in. Uh, if we look at point cloud regions, my point cloud is not classified, so I only have one region. And my scans, if I expand the whole thing, we can see that we have four different scan stations with one scan each. Okay, now to the georeference scans command. Um, so this drop down selects which scan I want to georeference. I would like to georeference all of them, so I will choose this, the bottom scan group, and it shows the scans that are included in that scan group. For my point ID, I can either type in P1 or select that from the Project Explorer, and then I just select any point in the point cloud, and we'll have a residual that shows, if I have more than one point, I'll start to get a residual that calculates, but if I hit georeference, that will move the scans to my control points. Now I can click on recompute down here and that will move, that will get everything in. If I double click on the scroll wheel on the mouse, that will zoom extents and show that this is currently everything in the project and it is in the right place. Perfect. So I'll close the georeference scans command and I will open up the register scans command. This is in the point clouds ribbon, registration, register scans. So in TVC version five, there has been an added plane-based registration tab. This is only for 
as we'll see in the tooltip here. We can automatically register by extracting planes with TZF and FLS stations only. That is the Trimble scanners and Ferro scanners. So I, here we select a reference station. This is the station that stays fixed in space for the registration. Um, you can choose any of them. So if you have one scan that's already geo-referenced and in, in or where you want it to be, you can register your other scans to match that scan in space. Here we can select our moving stations and we can choose to do one at a time or do everything at once. I'm going to go for everything at once and hit automatically register. There's our registration completed. We have this pop-up. Would you like to generate a registration report? This is your only opportunity. Yes, I would like to generate the registration report. Here we have the scan refinement report. Um, as part of the registration process, if we look here at the register scans command, previously the registration process involved doing a pairwise registration, so picking common points between scans, and then performing a, a refinement, had the scans fit even better together. In the plane-based registration, refinement is part of the plane-based process, so you don't have to do that additional step. So here we have a, an overall cloud-to-cloud -cloud error of 0 0.026 feet. And here on the next page, we have the results per station. So this is broken out in a table of sorts. And we get the average error, the percent overlap, and the confidence percentage between every pair of scans. Values that will require attention are highlighted in orange, and if there's very low overlap or very low confidence percentage, those will be highlighted in red. So let's go back and see how the registration looks. Look at that. I'm going to open up a 3D view to be able to get a better view. The 3D view is on the quick access toolbar up here, also in the point clouds ribbon if you've got it open. So there we go. For the color, it's kind of nice having the four different colors here, but I'm going to go back to true color. Here we have a lot of noise from vehicles that were driving by through the intersection while the scans were being completed. That can be very easily filtered out using the classify regions command. That will separate the point cloud into ground, high vegetation, power lines, signs and poles, buildings, and default the noise all gets put in the default uh, region. All right, so now here in the register scans command, we can click on the georeferencing tab, or we can click on the georeference scans command up here in the point clouds ribbon. So um, here we have the scan group, which is all four scans. So point one, in the point ID box, we can either type in the name or we can select it from the Project Explorer or we could click on it in the plan view and then we zoom in and click on it in the 3D view. So that is on this um, golden sign. It's the top right corner of this railroad museum arrow. So we select top right corner. Excellent. And then our second point is over here. It's the this corner of this white block. So we can select that point. Oh, whoops. I need to choose the point first. And then I can select my point in the point cloud. Might have missed it a little bit there, but that's okay. So we can go ahead and hit geo reference, and that will um going to rotate and translate the point cloud to fit the points that we've selected so far. Notice that as we pick points, we have a easting, northing, and elevation residual uh, computed and shown. This is a least squares adjustment, so with two, it's a very basic residual calculation, but as we get more points, the um, better these residuals will show the error. And then we can see if there have been some that we haven't picked very well or haven't fit very well. 
All right. You don't have to do the georeferencing before picking all of your points. However, um, georeferencing before finishing picking all the points makes it easier to pick the next couple. So now it'll line up a little bit better so I can select our point P4 and then zoom in. If the points are a little bit too small, we can adjust the size of them. I'll make them large. Click on the corner here. And then that's our P4. Got a little bit out of order here. Oh, not this corner. It's on this sign here. And where is it at? It looks like it is P3. And select our point right there. And there's our last two. Check the residuals. Ooh, it looks like the first one we picked and the second one we picked don't fit very well in the north direction. Let's go take a look at those. Well, I wouldn't be able to pick this one differently in the north, so it must be this point two that is off. So let's repick that point. Looks like the color corner goes about right there. How do the residuals look now? Look pretty good. So go ahead and hit GeoReference. That will apply the transformations to the scan data or the scans. All right, and there's our GeoReferencing. Um, if we zoom in on one of the points, we can see the our visual representation of the northern easting and elevation residuals. Twist down and so we can visually inspect how far off our um, picked point cloud points are from the georeferencing points. But this has applied a best fit of the scan data to the real world points that we are georeferencing to. And the last thing that we will do is using the inverse command on the quick access toolbar up here. We can pick two points. Uh, because this project is in Colorado, which is a very high elevation above sea level, about 5,000 feet or 1,600 meters, the ground distance will be a little bit larger than the grid distance. So there's our two points, and over here we can see the dif difference. Our grid distance is 269.551 feet, and our ground distance is 269.620 feet. So the scale factor has been applied to the point cloud and on that measurement that we just made on the point cloud. Excellent. So hope this helps you get a better understanding of importing TZF and FLS files into TBC version 5.0 and later. Let me know in the comments below what you like, what you didn't like about the video, if there's something that I should have touched on more, or if there are any questions that you still have. Thank you for watching.